Morning, everybody. Well, at least it's morning for me. It's like 9.30 in the morning. I didn't wake up too long ago. But I felt like doing some math for everybody. I'm the math panda. Or at least, I don't know. I love math. I love pandas. I figured why not put them together. Um, I'm starting out from the beginning of my intermediate algebra book. So, in section 1.2, it's talking about sets and basic concepts. So, we're going to go ahead and start off there. I'm pulling out number 42, which basically gives us two sets. We have set A, which has the set, no change. I'd like to do little squigglies. They're the same as those fancy little brackets. Say hi to my cat. That's cutie. Or Nini's. Hopefully she doesn't ruin anything. Anyway, so in set A, we've got the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then we end the squiggly. So that's set A. For set B, we've got 2, 4, 6, and 7. 2, 4, 6, and 7. All right. Those are the variables of the sets. They can be any letter of the alphabet you want. You can even combine letters. You can have like AU or ST, whatever you, whatever you feel like. Anyway, so for sets, what you want to do is, you know, and the sets can be whatever, whatever you want. They don't have to just be numbers. This is just really easy to explain. Um, so for these two sets, we need to find both the union and the intersection. Now, I guess I'll write it over here. All right. So the union would be eh, A union B. Really, really simple to, to remember. But the U stands for union. Yay! Union. All right. And that means, union means it's a combination of both set A and set B. Since 2 and the 4 overlap, we don't need to write them twice. So it's as many times as, in our case, the number appears. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right? That is A union B. Another thing that we have to do is we have to do A intersection B. That one is just remember that the ups it's supposed to be an upside down U. I know mine kind of sucks, but whatever. We're math. We're lazy. So this means intersection. That means it's the only ones that appear in each set. So like one is in set A, but one is not in set B. So therefore it cannot be in a intersection B. So, but we do have the two, like I mentioned here, two and four appeared twice. Therefore we didn't need to write it twice. We only had to write it once in here. So for A and B, and the intersection of them, 2 and 4 are going to be our only ones because they're the only ones that appear once or twice. or how, They're the only ones that appear in both set A and set B. So it'll be 2 and 4 is the intersection of set A and set B. So, yeah, I guess that's pretty much all for at least sets anyway. It's really super easy. Super, super easy. All right. So now we're moving on to number lines. Ooh, number lines are fun. All right. So problem 59 in my book in section 1.2 says that that's just the way to describe this thing in non-lettered form, but I'll actually write it out in a sentence for you too, okay? So it says that x is such that x is greater than or equal to zero, and then we close the little sentence. So 
and I'll write it underneath here. It says that x is such that x is greater than or equal to the number 0. All right? So obviously x goes in for x. This line right here explains is such that a nice short little way of saying it <laughs> and then obviously the greater than or equal to zero is right there so what we're gonna have to do is we have our big old fat number line make sure that we write the arrows indicating that it goes on further we have our zero here in the middle now what we need to do is we need to plot out where X is on the number line which is really really easy we can try you know We'll say that's negative 3, and we'll test it, all right? We plug in 3 for x, negative 3, sorry, is that greater than or equal to 0? Obviously, the answer is no, because negative 3 is smaller than 0. If you think of, you know, going from 0 into the negatives, things get smaller. From zero onto the positive side, things keep getting bigger. So then if we go over here and we try positive three, go ahead and we ask, is three greater than or equal to zero? Yay, we get a big old fat true. No, right false over there. <laughs> so in this case, in order to be able to write it out properly on our number line, since x is also equal to 0, I was taught to do the bracket thing. Or it can also be a um, the, the open circle where you just, sorry, open as if it's not included. It would be a closed circle, so it would be big old black dot. All right? Either of these two things is fine. It doesn't really matter. It depends on your teacher. My teacher has, my teachers don't care. So I was taught the bracket, so I do the bracket. And we want to make sure that we do that little fun thing. Yay! Or on the number line, we just black it out. Whatever your personal preference is. Because X never ends the solutions for X, so we don't have to worry about it. Hopefully you guys like what I'm doing so far. I don't know. I really hope. I enjoy math. I love it. And I just hope I can spread my wisdom on to everybody else. All right. So now we're going to be given a number line. And we have to find how to write that set. Do, 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 do. Set builder notation. There we go. Sorry, for a second I forgot what it was called. All right. Here's our number line. There's the lovely zero that we need to have up there. All right. So, on number 69, it says, there's the number one. The one is included. Ooh, yay. And then it goes on for what looks like ever. So it goes off that way. Two, three, four, and so on. So in set builder notation, how we would write this is that x is such that x, or x can actually be any kind of variable you want. x is just really popular with math, and I don't blame them for that. That x is either equal to or greater than, because the arrow continues on, than 1. All right, that's how we would write that one. So we'll go ahead and do a different one, one that isn't continuous. How's that sound? So for this one, we have our number line again, the 0. And for this one, this is number 73 out of my intermediate algebra book, says that negative 3, negative 
to negative 1, obviously. Open circle, which is equivalent to a parenthesis, not a bracket. Uh, and then it goes on to positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm sure your teachers are going to really want you to be sure to put, you know, these guys on here. <laughs> All the numbers and stuff. And then the 5 is a closed circle. And we don't want to go inside that guy. We just kind of connect and make it big and thick and squiggly and all that. Yay. So that's what our number line looks like. And now we need to write this one in set builder notation. So we write that x is such that negative 3, because that is where the line ends on negative 3, even though it is not included, that's perfectly fine. Negative 3 is less than x, which is less than or equal to the number 5, because on the 5, the circle is filled in. So therefore, the 5 is included. And then we go ahead and close the set notation. All right, you guys. Hopefully, this helped you out. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I won't know unless you guys leave me comments. Please do. Um, and... If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I will leave like answer videos and stuff on, on here on YouTube and uh, hopefully answer a lot of the questions that you have. I just, I hope I help you guys out and I will see you again in the next video.